Hi, and to all those who've been following my March Navy How To series, welcome back. I'm sorry it's been a while since I last posted. Over the next few videos, I'm going to cover one of the most requested topics, how to fix the vessel's position from a series of star sights. As it's quite a long video, I'm going to cover this topic in different ones over the next couple of weeks. In today's video, I'm going to cover what pre-planning needs to be done and the basics of what we are going to be doing. In the next two videos, we'll do the calculations for our planet and for a star, and then we'll put it all together and plot our position using some of the different methods. The big misconception that a lot of people have is that you can simply pick up your sextant and get the position. Unfortunately, this isn't the case, and we need to do a little bit of pre-planning first. To fix a position using the sextant, we need a minimum of two position lines, and we have several methods of obtaining one. In this video, we're going to concentrate on fixing our position at sunset, although the same principle applies to sunrise, using the stars and the planet. Unfortunately, it's only possible to fix our position using the stars and planets when both they and the horizon are visible, which from a practical point of view means we can only do it during twilight, after the sun has set, or just before sunrise. As our time frame is limited, it makes our life much easier if we do a bit of pre-planning and make use of our trusty star chart to select the best stars to use. Remember that at sunset, celestial bodies in the east will become visible first, and this will also be the first horizon to disappear. The opposite is true for sunrise, where bodies in the east will be the first to be obscured by the sun. If we're fixing our position using only the stars, or planets, then we will need a minimum of three position lines to get an accurate fix. Due to how easy it is to introduce errors in the calculation by either rounding figures or being out by a few seconds, it's a good idea to use at least four bodies, and to have an additional one or two in your mind in case cloud or other obstructions prevent you from shooting the preferred stars. You will get the best result when the bodies you select are at similar altitudes. If they're all on the same horizon, or if you're using stars on both horizons, you ideally want opposite stars to be at a similar altitude to each other, as this will reduce the errors caused by any abnormal refraction. That probably doesn't make much sense, so I will attempt to explain using my crude drawing skills. If we imagine that we are standing on the ship shown on the diagram, we would see two stars, on one side of the ship and two on the other. This is what is meant by opposite horizons. As you can see, the two highest stars are on the opposite horizon, and at roughly the same altitude. Therefore, these would be ideal to use as any errors introduced by non-ideal conditions will affect both of these stars equally and therefore should cancel out. Accurate timing is the key to success when it comes to fixing the position, as a few seconds can make a big difference to your result. As such, whenever you take your sight, it is key that you get the exact time to the second. Thankfully, these days we have GPS, which is a highly accurate clock Synchronize your stopwatch or watch with your GPS time before starting or use an alternative means of knowing the exact time of each site. Unless our ship is at anchor or drifting, it is likely that we will have moved between each site. Again, a slight difference in position can have a large effect on our calculation. Thankfully, as long as we have the exact time, we don't need to worry too much about our position as I'll explain shortly. Hopefully what I said so far makes sense to you. If not, don't worry too much as it should become clearer as we go through my example. If you're planning on following along, now's the time to pause and make sure you have the radar plotting sheet, the intercept pro forma, a calculator and a ruler. Both the radar plotting sheet and the intercept pro forma can be downloaded from my website and I've linked to them in the description below. So let's get started. Let's imagine that it's the 18th of October 2016 and we're mid-Atlantic traveling at 10 knots on a course of 230 degrees. Being diligent officers, we've decided to fix our position from the stars at sunset. We did some pre-planning and selected which bodies we're going to use. It's 20.45 and 0 seconds, and we've just used our sextant to obtain the altitude of Venus, getting 13 degrees, 32.2 minutes. So we write this down somewhere. It's now 20.48 and 0 seconds, and the star Nunki is now visible. So we obtain its altitude, which is 29 degrees, 01.7 minutes. Lastly, we see it starting to cloud over, but we just managed to get a third sight from Alcade of 26 degrees, 
14.1 minutes, and that was at 20, 50, and 30 seconds. Conveniently, we were only able to obtain three, but in reality, you would get some others as well. With this information, we can now turn to our pro forma sheet and fill in what we know as shown on your screen. You'll notice that there are three very obviously blank boxes at the top of our pro forma, titled Height of Eye, EP Latitude, and EP Longitude. Let's start filling these in, with Height of Eye, which is the height of the observer's eye above sea level. You'll have to work this out for yourself on your ship, but in this example, it was 20 metres. So, if we're calculating our position, how are we supposed to know our latitude and longitude? Well, you've probably already guessed that EP stands for estimated position. You may also see it referred to as assumed position in some places. I said earlier not to worry too much about your position, and now I'll explain why and the two ways of obtaining our estimated position. Method one, which is technically the correct way and what you would have done before the advent of GPS, is to run on your estimated position from the last known fix of the vessel. This is basic chart work, so I'm not going to explain how to do it in this video. So method two, these days we know our position at all times through a GPS, and the only reason we would be fixing our position via the stars would be to practice or to cross check. So rather than calculating an estimated position, we can just pick a random position that is near to our known position. You could pick the exact position you are in at the time, but that will make the plotting impracticable. Instead, select a nearby position. If you're using a paper chart, a good place to pick is a nearby intersection of the latitude and longitude lines on the chart. It also matters that your chosen location is nearby, or at the very least on the same chart. The further away it is, the larger the error, especially if it's a chart covering the entire North Atlantic. The reason this works is that we are plotting our position based on the difference between what altitude we should have had for a given position and what altitude we actually had. By doing this, we offset the position line by the difference which when combined with multiple lines of position should give us our actual position. Obviously, the further away our estimated position is from your actual position, the larger the error will be as while changes in azimuth are relatively small at positions nearby for the given time, the further away you move, the greater the change. For our example, I have conveniently decided that at 20.45 and 0 seconds, we were in a position of 34 degrees north and 45 minutes west, which is the nearest round latitude and longitude to our actual position. As we were travelling at 10 knots, and we didn't instantaneously sight all bodies, we have to make allowances for the distance travelled between each sight. Practically, we do this by working out the distance travelled between each sight, then using our paper chart we do some basic chart work by plotting our estimated position and running on our course for the calculated distances, reading off the position at the appropriate times. Alternatively, if you don't have a paper chart at hand, you can calculate the assumed position manually. The important thing is that you cannot use the same position for all your sites if the vessel is moving. I have mathematically worked out our positions at 20, 48 and 20, 50 and 30 seconds, so we can write down these positions on our pro forma. Now that we have covered the basic preparation and taken our sites, the next step is to go on and complete the calculations necessary to allow us to plot the position. In order to minimise the length of the video, I have left this for part 2. I hope what we have covered so far has made sense. If not, please feel free to drop me a message in the comments below and join me next time when we will complete the calculation. To ensure you get notified when I post new videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you found this video useful, hit the like button. Until next time, safe sailing.